Good morning. We welcome our visitors today, and we have these little friendship booklets in the pews that if you write down your info, we'll send you a card for having visited, and you can request certain things like a call from pastor, new membership, whatever. I am trusting the Lord Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? Since we are gathered to hear God's word, call upon him in prayer and praise, and receive the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ in the fellowship of this altar. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand, forget not the afflicted. The Lord is King forever and ever. The nations perish from this land. O Lord, you hear the desire of the afflicted. You will strengthen their heart. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now forever. Amen. Arise, O Lord, O God, lift up your hand, 
forget not the afflicted. Almighty God, you know we live in the midst of so many dangers that in our frailty we cannot stand upright. Grant strength and protection to support us in all dangers and carry us through all temptations. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for today is from Jeremiah chapter 1. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the worm, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Then I said, Ah, Lord, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a youth, for to all whom I speak, all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord bowed out his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put words in your mouth. See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and to overflow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. The epistle today is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12. I will show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in the tongues of men and angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. I will give away all I have, and if I deliver up my body to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient and kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never ends. As for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for knowledge, it will pass. For we know in part and prophecy in part. 
but when we, the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So now faith and love abide, these three, but the greatest of these is love. This is the word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. Luke, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and he was teaching them on the Sabbath. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word possessed authority. And in the synagogue there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon, and he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be silent and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm. And they were all amazed and said to one another, What is this word? For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. And he arose and left the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Now Simon's mother-in-law was ill with a high fever, and they appealed to him on her behalf. And he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her. And immediately she rose and began to serve them. Now when the sun was setting, all those who had any who were sick with various diseases brought them to him, and he laid his hands on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, saying, You are the Son of God. But he rebuked them and would not allow them to speak, because they knew that he was the Christ. And when it was day, he departed and went into a desolate place. And the people sought him and came to him, and would have kept him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the good news of the kingdom of God to other towns as well, for I was sent for this purpose. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Judea. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess our faith. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. 
You may be seated. Our next hymn is Jesus has come and brings pleasure. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Now the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Kind of mind-boggling, but God knew all of us before our parents even met. And he had picked out for us what we would be doing in life. You never know what you're going to do in life. You make a lot of plans as you graduate from high school. You make more plans in college. But sometimes you wind up doing completely other things than you planned. I had no intention of being a pastor as a high schooler, nor as a beginning college student. I love languages. I wanted to be a translator for the United Nations in New York. That was my stated goal, and I was actively working toward it by taking the appropriate language classes required to work there. But it didn't work out that way. <laughs> I wasn't appointed by God before my birth to work for the UN. I was apparently appointed to be a prophet to the nations just like Jeremiah, and I didn't realize it until late in my senior year at The Ohio State University, go Bucks. <laughs> 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 
There were clues, though. As a college student, I never stopped going to church every week, and on midweek holidays, even missing class to do so. I was constantly inviting people to come to church with me. When I was dissatisfied by the worship at the on-campus Lutheran Chapel, I took a bus for a few miles to get to a regular LCMS parish. When I spent a summer in England in 1993, I found an LCMS church in North London and attended every week. All things considered, I was a pretty churchy college kid. (laughs) By graduation time in college, I knew I was going to go to seminary and be a pastor. That, as it turned out, was not a fruitless plan of a young idealistic man, but was actually what God appointed me to do now for 23 years. You were appointed by God before birth to do what you do. Jean Thur, (laughs) whatever else she planned to do as a youth, was appointed to become a doctor and care for the sick. Paul Schmidt, whatever else he planned to do in high school, was appointed to be a realtor and help people find shelter. Don Kopp, whatever else he planned to do in high school, was appointed by God to help people protect their property through insurance. But even if your job is not as prestigious as those, it was what you were meant to do, even if you didn't know it until you fell into it. Everybody serves a purpose in society, and it was determined by God before your birth. Jeremiah protested his call, So did Jonah, by the way, and you see what that got him, uh, in the belly of a whale and straight on to preach to the people he didn't want to preach to. God's will is done. But Jeremiah protested on a different ground than Jonah. Then I said, Ah, Lord God, behold, I do not know how to speak, for I am only a youth. But God doesn't accept that answer, and I'll tell you why. Every one of us in the timeline of God are mere infants. If you're 5, 13, 34, 57, 78, or 97, that's still a blink of an eye in the eyes of the Lord. He calls us grass that springs up in the morning and dies in the midday heat the very same day. Are you a kid at heart? You don't know the half of it. (laughs) We're all little kids to Jesus, no matter how old we get. God's retort to Jeremiah is, Do not say, I am only a youth, for to all to whom I send you, you shall go, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. That goes for all of us, prophets or not. If you are called to speak the word of the Lord, you will. As a teacher, as an evangelist, as a pastor, as a parent, all commanded to speak the word of the Lord, all who don't resist the Holy Spirit, do speak it. But how do you know what to say and when and to whom? Our text, Then the Lord put out his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth, See, I have set you this day over nations and over kingdoms to pluck up and to break down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Sounds grandiose, prophet of God level stuff, but no, a Christian who has even just the beginning of wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, is over nations and over kingdoms, which is the big scale. But there's also the small scale, your child, your student, your parishioner. We destroy and overthrow evil in their lives with the word of God. We build and plant saving faith in those of whom we are in charge. We destroy and overthrow evil by giving the law and correcting our charges when they do wrong and call out sin when we see it. That's the unpleasant work of the prophet, but the goal is very good because it is the salvation of their souls and the destruction of evil. So forgive me when I bite a little too hard. (laughs) Law of proclamation only works when you wound your hearer, forcing them to seek the doctor. 
our Lord Jesus for forgiveness. By his wounds we are healed. His pierced hands he lays on our wounded souls. And by his wounded hands our wounded souls are completely healed. Now you see I've transitioned from destroy and overthrow to build and plant. This is the pleasant work of the prophet. You have to preach Jesus as the harsh taskmaster, but once a heart is wounded by his law, he comes to them with healing and rest through his gospel. Telling a child, be they five or 95, that despite what they did wrong, God still loves them and sent his son to make up for all of our wrongs and make us right, just, is a joy each time. Forgiveness is good news, especially when you know how bad you've messed up. Hence, law and gospel preaching, the hallmark of the Lutheran Church, Missouri Synod, destroy and build, overthrow and plant. One pleasant, the other not, but both necessary to a soul in need. Jeremiah is told to prophesy against Judah and Jerusalem. The unpleasant destroy, overthrow the law. The people were idolatrous. They had forsaken the Lord. They didn't need gospel. That would have made them comfortable in all the wrong they were doing. They needed law to break their hardened hearts. People don't like being preached law and being convicted of sin, and they can be hostile as a result. But God tells Jeremiah, But you, dress yourself for work, arise and say to them everything that I command you. Do not be dismayed by them, lest I dismay you before them. And I, behold, I make you this day a fortified city, an iron pillar, and bronze walls. Against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests, and the people of the land. They will fight against you. But they shall not prevail against you, for I am with you, declares the Lord, to deliver you. When I was going through my mother's papers after she died in 2016, I found a note I wrote her uh, that she kept for 40 years. Now keep in mind I was maybe 10, 11 years old. It read, Mom... I hate you. I take back my hug from yesterday, and I will never hug you again. (laughs) I don't know what prompted that from me, but I was being very wicked and rebellious. But my wickedness did not prevail against her. She held her ground and overcame me. That note had to hurt, but she handled it and moved on. When she was in the nursing home, I hugged my mom with tears in my eyes. When my mother was on her deathbed, I kissed her on the cheek and said goodbye. We are all rebellious children against God our Father. We do so many things that are hurtful to him. We may not say we hate God with words, but prove so by our actions. He handles it. He moves on because he forgives Therefore, he is feared, which is the beginning of wisdom. After a life of sin and failing, when we're on our deathbeds, Jesus will kiss us and take our lives. He will embrace our souls and deliver them to heaven to await the perfect reuniting of our souls with our bodies in the resurrection. It will be glorious. The worse of sinners we were, all the greater the final kiss and embrace of Christ will be when we die and are taken to heaven. Though, of course, we do not increase a sin to increase the grace and relief. But have faith. Our faithless idolatry is met by God's faithful mercy and limitless compassion. Our twistedness, our perversions, our deviances from the way of truth will be met by God's purifying love putting us on the straight path to eternal glory. All through Jesus Christ, his dear Son, our Lord, who hung on a cross and bled and died so that our worship could be pulled from ourselves and creation to him, the eternal Son of God, who saves. By his wounds we are healed, forgiven, 
and given rest, culminating in the eternal Sabbath day of rest in the glorious kingdom of God. All that through Jesus Christ our Lord, who called us to the, be the people we are even before we were born. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. We stand. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious creator, your son commanded demons and they obeyed him so that afflicted people were set free. Cast out the forces of darkness, both open and hidden in our world. Give courage, faith, peace, and relief to our brotherhood throughout the world who suffer for the sake of Christ and hold your children in your care. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, your Son taught with authority. Through those called into his holy ministry, use that authority to forgive sins, strengthen faith, and empower lives of good works, that the people of this world would see your love in us. Lord, in your mercy. Forgive our sins, Lord, especially the false acts that cannot pass for real love. Enable us to reflect your love, which is patient and kind, does not envy or boast, is not arrogant or rude, and does not insist on its own way. Fill our lives with good works that truly care for others. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Lord, we give you thanks for the gift of marriage and family, especially your blessings to all married couples and those celebrating anniversaries this week, including William and Karen Larson and uh, Gregory and Jillian Taggetts. Make the relationship between each husband and a wife a picture of Christ's ceaseless love for his bride, the church, that we may live in your forgiving love. Grant all parents your care as they raise their children and give every father and mother a zeal that points them constantly to your ways and your forgiveness. Fill children with obedience, respect, and love for their parents. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Almighty God, you know all things, and the words of your mouth stand over nations and over kingdoms, able to pluck up and break down, destroy and overthrow. Rule by your might that our nation may be governed and preserved. Do not let us be dismayed as citizens in this world or of your kingdom, for you are king above all. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. O Lord, arise, forget not the afflicted, but hear their desires and strengthen their hearts, especially Hope, Marge, Levi, Dale, Paul, Reverend Jerry, Sandy, Sue, Christopher, Judy, Picor, and those in our midst fighting COVID and other illnesses. Lord, in your mercy. Father, we praise you for all who have lived and died with faith in Christ and now rest in your presence. Unite us with your Son and with those saints as we eat and drink his life-giving body and blood at this altar. Grant us repentant hearts as we receive your gifts and strengthen us to care for the needs of others in the way of Christ our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Everlasting God, 
for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy Lord, God of Sabbath, the door. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. As the glory of your presence once filled your ancient temple, so in the incarnation of your Son, Jesus Christ, you manifested the fullness of your glory in human flesh. We give you thanks that in his most holy supper you reveal your glory to us. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood so that we may one day behold your glory face to face. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the remission of sins. This do as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. is the very blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in his peace. Amen. We stand and sing the Nuke Dimittis.
let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in a fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. You may be seated. This Tuesday is our first winter warm-up for, for anybody who needs to get out of the cold. Um, we're going to serve soup on top of that. And we have a pretty good staff for the first Tuesday, but the following Tuesdays we need people to fill in so we know that we're going to be covered. Um, there is a Google Doc with the volunteer schedule. Um, I will have to get that into next week's weekly page. Um, but anyway, uh, it's a very good work and our closing hymn, as I foreshadowed, is Beautiful Savior. <laughs> 